When Wangari finished elementary school, she was 11 years old. Her mind was like a seed rooted in rich soil, ready to grow. Wangari wanted to continue her education, but to do so, she would have to leave her village and move to the capital city of Nairobi. Wangari had never been farther than her valley's ridge. She was scared. Go, her mother said. She picked up a handful of earth and placed it gently into her daughter's hand. Where you go, we go. Wangari was sad to leave, but she knew that what her mother said was true. Wherever Wangari went, so went her family, her village, and her Kihuyu ways. She kissed her family and said goodbye to the Mugumu tree, remembering her promise always to protect it. When Gurari's new life in the city amazed her, skyscrapers towered above her head, not trees. People rushed to the streets like river water over stones. At school, she lived with other girls like her, all trying to weave their, vill their village customs with new city ones. At night, when the girls slept, Wangari dreamed of home and the sweet figs of the Mugumu tree. Her dreams reminded her to honor her Kihiu tradition of respecting all living things. Wangari was an excellent student and science became her favorite subject. She especially loved studying living things. Air, she learned, was made from two molecules of oxygen bonded together. Bodies were made of cells. Leaves changed color because of photosynthesis. As graduation neared, Wangari told her friends she wanted to become a biologist. Not many native women became scientists, they told her. I will, she said. Wangari would have to travel halfway around the world to the United States to study biology. She had never left Kenya and had little money, but with her teacher's help, she won a scholarship to a college in Kansas. America was a very different from Kenya. In college, many of Wangari's science professors were women. From them, she learned that a woman could do anything she wanted to, even if it hadn't been done before. While Wangari discovered how molecules move under a microscope lens and how cells divide in petri dishes, she also found her strength as a woman scientist. After she graduated from college, Wangari traveled to Pennsylvania to continue her studies. Letters from home told Wangari about changes in Kenya. The people had elected a Kikuyu president, Jomo Kenyatta, Proud of her country and proud of Kikuyu, Wangari decided to return home to Kenya to help her people. America had changed Wangari. She had discovered a spirit of possibility and freedom that she wanted to share with Kenyan women. She accepted a teaching job at the University of Nairobi. Not many women were professors then, and even fewer taught science. Wangari led the way for other women and girls. She worked for equal rights so that female scientists would be treated with the same respect as male scientists. 